working to connect a region of over 600 million bridges between our lands. Angeles and you're watching ASEAN in Focus on tonight's headlines. President Marcus Jr. has unveiled a significant stride towards the adoption of a federal form of government. Addressing the Partido Federal ng Pilipinas oath-taking event at Malacanang Palace, the President emphasized the redistribution of power as a means to enhance political stability. Thailand's new Prime Minister Sretha Thavisin engaged in a pivotal meeting with his predecessor, Prayut Chanocha. During the encounter, Prime Minister Thavisin reaffirmed his commitment to fostering unity and cooperation in the country. The Philippines has communicated that it will not raise objections to Japan's decision to release wastewater from its Fukushima nuclear power plant into the sea. The Department of Foreign Affairs clarified the stance on Thursday. In a tribute to a basketball legend, Philippine icon Kaloy Luizaga was posthumously inducted into the FIBA Hall of Fame. The momentous ceremony took place at the Sofitel Philippine Plaza Manila in Pasay City on Wednesday night. First in our news, President Marcus Jr. unveiled a significant stride towards adopting a federal form of government, a move he believes will bolster, will bolster political stability. Speaking at the Partido Federal ng Pilipinas, oath-taking event in Malacanang Palace, the President highlighted his vision of redistributing power. And that is very simple, that, come, that, that derives from a very simple idea, that uh, the stability uh, of a political structure is much more dependent, mu much more reliable when we have many power centers. If the power centers only belong here in Manila, then pagsakay mo yung Manila, bagsakang buong Pilipinas. But with the power centers being given to us, to the local governments, to the local districts, and to those who are operating at the local level, and thereby uh, bringing those power centers to many, many, many places, it makes for a more stable political structure and makes a more stable political uh, uh, life. President Marcus advocated for localized decision-making, asserting that governors and congressmen's understanding of local realities positions them well for such roles. It, in, we were talking here about the, the federalism. And what we have started to do, kahit na in all but name, ay ating ginagawa ay talagang ay ibinibigay ang discretion, ang power, ang function hanggat maari sa pinakamababa na level na maari nating gawin. So, we are doing the first step of uh, the federation, fe the federal government of the Fili for the Philippines in all but name. There has to be a central uh, tenet, a central principle to what we are doing. And that is in, in parallel with the thinking of federalism is that with all the systems that we are trying to put together, what we are trying to do is to make the decision, the decision process uh, be made in as low a level as possible. Australian Defence Minister Richard Marles has expressed his country's willingness to increase defence cooperation with the Philippines in response to tensions between Manila and Beijing over territorial claims in the South China Sea. In an interview with ABC Radio, Mr. Marl said that Australia is committed to upholding international rules and norms in the South China Sea and that this shared strategic interest aligns with the Philippines' objectives. He also noted the recent joint patrol by Australia, Japan and the Philippines and said that he hopes to see more such cooperation in the future. 
Mr. Marles also said that Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese is planning to visit the Philippines next month. This will be the first visit by an Australian leader to the Philippines in two decades. And it's expected to focus on defense cooperation and further strengthening ties between the two countries. The Philippines and China have been at odds over territorial claims in the South China Sea for many years. China has been increasingly asserting its claims in the region and has built artificial islands in some disputed areas. The Philippines has called on China to respect international law and to stop its aggressive behavior in the South China Sea. Cambodia's newly appointed leader, Han Manet, has set forth an ambitious vision to transform the nation into a high-income country by 2050. In his first cabinet meeting since being endorsed as the prime minister earlier this week, Han Manet outlined plans to enhance food security, health care, accessibility, and economic conditions. However, details on the specific strategies to achieve these objectives remained limited. In his televised address, Han Manet declared the upcoming 25 years as a transformative phase for Cambodia, emphasizing comprehensive economic reforms to achieve the goal of becoming, of becoming a high-income country by 2050. The World Bank categorizes high-income economies as those with a per capita gross national income of $13,846 or higher. As of last year, Cambodia's per capita GNI stood at $1,700. Han Manet's strategy encompasses enhancing health care, education, and environmental sustainability while aiming for an average annual economic growth rate of around 7% and a reduction in poverty rates. Ensuring food security and inclusivity also ranked high on the agenda. <laughs> Han Manet, the eldest son of long-serving ruler Han Sen, was officially endorsed as the new prime minister following a dynastic transition of power after last month's widely criticized elections. The Cambodian People's Party, or CPP, led by Han Sen, secured nearly all of the 125 lower house seats in the July polls, which drew global skepticism due to the exclusion of the main opposition party. Thailand's new Prime Minister Sretha Thavisin met with his predecessor Prayut chan on Thursday morning and expressed his commitment to unity and cooperation. 
Mr. Tavisin said that the meeting was a positive development and that it marked the first time two Thai prime ministers had engaged in a dialogue. He also said that they discussed a range of issues, including the economy and the need to move beyond the political divisions that have characterized recent years. Many things, many things. It's just a courtesy call with him and uh, some issues that he would like us to carry on, like look after uh, the e economic issues. You need a park so on. I think it's not การพบปากกันผลเดียวก็จะจบกันไปนะครับในหลายๆภาคส่วนผมคิดว่าก็ต้องให้เวลาให้การกระทําเป็นตัวเป็นตัวพิสูจน์ครับแต่น้อยผม
If you challenge an election, you should be able to challenge an election. I thought the election was a rigged election, a stolen election, and I should have every right to do that. As you know, you have many people that you've been watching over the years do the same thing, whether it's Hillary Clinton or Stacey Abrams or many others. When you uh, have that great freedom to challenge, you have to be able to, otherwise you're going to have very dishonest elections. What has taken place here is a travesty of justice. We did nothing wrong. I did nothing wrong. And everybody knows that I've never had such support. And that goes with the other ones, too. What they're doing is election interference. They're trying to interfere with an election. There's never been anything like it in our country before. This is their way of campaigning. And this is one instance, but you have three other instances. It's election interference. So I want to thank you for being here. We did nothing wrong at all. And we have every right, every single right, to challenge an election that we think is dishonest, that we think it's very dishonest. So thank you all very much, and I'll see you uh, very soon. Thank you very much. Philip Toledo in Atlanta, Georgia, for Eagle News. We live in extraordinary times. Russian President Vladimir Putin has finally broken his silence on the plane crash that has killed Wagner leader Yevgeny Prigozhin and other senior members of the paramilitary group. In televised remarks, President Putin expressed his sincere condolences to the families of all the victims, referring to the crash as a tragedy. He also acknowledged the Wagner members who lost their lives for their significant contribution to Russia's operations in Ukraine. Действительно, если там находились, вроде первичные данные говорят о том, что там находились и сотрудники компании Wagner. Хотел бы отметить, что это люди, которые внесли существенный вклад в наше общее дело борьбы с неонацистским режимом в Украине. Мы об этом помним, знаем и не забудем. The crash took place on Wednesday evening, exactly two months after Prigozhin led a rebellion against Moscow's top military officials. Although an investigation into air traffic rule violations was initiated by Moscow, silence from investigators has fueled speculation about the possibility of an assassination. Putin's remarks on the crash were notable for their nuance. He acknowledged Prigozhin's mixed fate, admitting that he had made serious errors but also achieved significant outcomes. He also referred to his long acquaintance with Prigozhin since the early 90s. Prigozhina I knew very well. From the beginning of the 90s, it was a very difficult life. И ошибки у него были серьезные в жизни, и добивался он результатов нужных и для себя, и тогда, когда я его просил об этом для общего дела. President Putin's tone in his recent remarks was different from his address to the Russian public in June when he labeled Prigozhin a traitor and cautioned against civil war. However, President Putin's comments on the crash didn't explicitly rule out the possibility of foul play. He said the investigation would take time, but he emphasized that it would be thorough and conclusive. Они начали уже предварительное расследование этого происшествия, и оно будет проведено в полном объеме и доведено до конца. Это здесь нет никаких сомнений. Посмотрим о том, что скажут следователи в ближайшее время. А сейчас проводятся экспертизы, и технические экспертизы, и генетические. На это нужно какое-то время. The Philippines will not protest Japan's decision to release waste water from its Fukushima nuclear power plant into the sea, according to the Department of Foreign Affairs. The DFA said it defers to the opinion of the International Atomic Energy Agency, the United Nations Agency in charge of nuclear cooperation. The IAEA has said that the tritium, the radioactive material present in the Fukushima wastewater, has been significantly diluted with seawater and is therefore safe. The DFA said the Philippines is also looking at the issue from a science and fact-based perspective and will continue to monitor the situation. From a radiation protection perspective, there is nothing wrong with the Japanese plan. And I think that's why you'll find that most radiation protection agencies have approved the Japanese plan. Uh, outside of that, 
is the politics of the release. And so, uh, you know, that's really one for the politicians um, to work through. Uh, tritium is uh, has been released from New nuclear facilities around the world for decades um, and to date we have not seen any detrimental environmental or human health issues. So um, and the amount of tritium that the Japanese are looking to release um, is well below what other nuclear facilities around the world are releasing currently. Uh, you know I do believe that there, there does need to be you know still ongoing monitoring to make sure that the ALPS process is efficient. And no doubt there was, there's going to be a lot of interest in monitoring, um, you know, the environment uh, or, of where the water is released. If you tested the fish here in Australia, you will find radiation in those fish. And uh, that's because the sea is radioactive. You know, people don't understand that the sea naturally contains tritium. It contains all, you know, it contains uranium and the um, and the decay products from uranium. So the sea itself is naturally uh, radioactive, and so um, and same as all our food, all our water. We're just exposed to it all the time. We just don't get that message out enough to the general population. The Hong Kong government will ban the import of all aquatic products from 10 prefectures in Japan, including Tokyo, Fukushima, Chiba, Tochigi, Ibaraki, Ganma, Miyagi, Niigata, Nagano, and Saitama. The ban will take effect today. The decision was made following the announcement by Japan that it will begin releasing treated radioactive wastewater from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant into the Pacific Ocean. The Environment Ecology Bureau said it will continuously monitor various data during the period of the ban, including the operation of the nuclear contaminated water treatment system. Statistics and data from Japan on the seawater near the Fukushima nuclear power plant and the radiation level of any food samples and aquatic product samples collected nearby. We'll keep under review uh, a basket of factors, uh, including uh, the, how, uh, the, how the operation of the um, um, nuclear contaminated water treatment system is going, and um, any statistics uh, or data from the Japanese side on um, seawater uh, near Fukushima, uh, the nuclear power station, and um, the uh, radiation level of any food samples, um, aquatic product samples collected um, uh, nearby. And on the part of Hong Kong, uh, because uh, the Center for Food Safety uh, is collecting um, aquatic product samples every day, uh, doing testing, uh, so we'll have um, uh, our own database. So we make reference to the data over time and uh, observe after a certain period of time. On when government will consider um, varying the um, food safety order, I mean amending the safety order, I think it's now too early to say. The Center for Food Safety is currently collecting aquatic product samples daily and conducting tests on them. Permanent Secretary for Environment Ecology Vivian Lau said that the government will keep the ban under review and may lift it if the situation improves. And finally in our news, Philippine basketball legend, the great difference, Kaloy Loizaga, was posthumously inducted into the FIBA Hall of Fame on Wednesday night. The ceremony took place at the Sofitel Philippine Plaza Manila in Pasay City. Now, Loizaga was joined by a group of 12 other legendary players and coaches, including former NBA star Yao Ming. Loizaga's children, Chito, Joey, and his sister Bing, and uh, Teresa, plus uh, Carmen and their mother, uh, accepted the award on his behalf. Loizaga was a dominant force in the Philippine basketball during his playing career. He was a member of the Philippine team that won the bronze medal in the 1954 FIBA World Cup, the best finish by an Asian country in tournament history. He was also a 10-time PBA MVP and a 13-time PBA champion. Loizaga was inducted into, into the FIBA Hall of Fame in recognition of his outstanding contributions to the game of basketball. He's the first Filipino player to be inducted 
into the FIBA Hall of Fame. As my usual habit, I'd like to end the week on a positive note. Let's encourage and build each other up so that no one is left behind. And that's it for tonight's broadcast. I'm Alma Angela. Stay in the news because we live in extraordinary times tonight.